let's see if it's working. Let's see if it's working. Not sure if I'm connecting. Okay. All right. I think I think I'm fully connected. Let me see. All right. Hello everyone. Greg here from Greg here from Brisbane, Australia. It's early Saturday morning in Brisbane, Australia, five o'clock. Uh, my apologies about the lighting situation. Family still sleeps, but I'm trying to time this uh, live cast so people in Europe and in the United States and everywhere around the world could um, will have opportunity to tune in and listen. Due to time zones, it's really hard to time, uh, so everyone can um, at their convenience. Um, connect to my uh, live cast. So today uh, live stream is about uh, transformation and the part of my transformation that you chosen is uh, weight loss. Weight loss is interesting one because I usually if I look back at my transformation it's the last thing I focus on and um, uh, the reason is that uh, so many good changes happened to me during the transformation that um, weight loss, it's its almost like a positive side effect. It's not really, um, it, it's not really what I was aiming for. If, if you remember my story, I was walking through the Singapore airport and I felt so miserable when I, I, I bent to tie the laces that got untied and I couldn't reach them. So the, the whole body composition, the whole internal feeling prompted me to do something. And um, <clears throat> weight loss, obviously, one of those. And um, when people are talking about weight loss, let's start from the beginning. Um, I would like to, to talk about um, weight gain. So we would not want to lose weight without gaining weight. So the first step, I believe, in weight loss um, journey of yours, I would, I would try to understand what did you do? What happened that led you to a point where you start gaining weight? So from what I see around me, from what I experience in my life, um, most of the weight gain happened because of the five to ten different reasons. And... I'll try to list every single of them, in my opinion. We will unwrap them and we will see which one is something that you struggle with. I think the first point in, in weight loss um, journey is actually acknowledge not only the problem, but also how did you get to the problem. So you can address root cause and not try something that is not effective. Because if you keep in your current lifestyle and nothing is changes, it doesn't matter what shake or peel or what dietitian you see or how hard you go to the gym, you won't be able to lose weight and sustain that loss. Many people that genu generally uh, lose weight <clears throat> and it's not, it didn't come part of the lifestyle, they're gaining weight back and some more. And I'll explain about that later. But let's talk about first most common, I guess, um, reason why people gain in weight in the first place. Uh, I think the first one in my books would be, in general terms, bad food choices. What does that mean? So bad food choices, it's not what's good for you or what's bad for you. Is um, our food plays so many different important roles in our well-being and one of those is uh, fuel and nutrition. So when we get no fuel and no nutrition out of food that we consume, 
that would correspond immediately or subsequently to weight gain. So for example, one of those situations would be empty calories. A um, good example would be what I see at my workplace. People either skipping breakfast, which is you know the good thing if you put it in context, or eating toast for breakfast, right? One little thing because they're trying to lose weight, so the small piece of bread they eat, in their mind, calories in, calories out, and um, it would kind of lead to weight loss. So what happens? They eat bread. It's pure carbohydrate, and not it's not a good one at all because of the gluten content and other things in it. But let's say the piece of bread, right? Not many calories, but most of the calories, and all of them, would be carbohydrates, right? What they will do, they will come to bloodstream as a glucose and uh, spike insulin, and insulin will equal uh, um, fat storage. Every time that insulin in some level present in our body, it will signal to store fat. We need to do everything not to spike the insulin. So for example, with the breakfast little or big, it's not how big it is, it's what you eat. So be it food choices or empty calories and piece of bread in the morning, I would, I, would, uh, I would consider empty calories because bread would not have any nutrition and would have no energy. We're not talking about caloric energy, we're talking about energy that body will take and use for energy, right? So the second point that I believe in bed food choices and uh, that would be poor macro rashes. Macro is such a, I guess, gym term or, or fitness term, but macros, it's um, referred to macronutrients in the food that you eat. If your food is very simple on macronutrients, body expect something from food that you eat. And if it's not getting it, it's uh, ending up dissatisfied. And that dissatisfaction will come as... Um, hunger later on, right? So for example, again, referring to a piece of bread, you ate piece of bread, the macronutrients are very poor. So um, body say, all right, where are my minerals and vitamins and so on, and even energy. And while you ate your breakfast, you did not deliver seemingly any of um, uh, those macronutrients. So as you can clearly see, and I'm not, um, I'm not saying that don't eat bread, or I would say not don't eat bread, but I'm not saying that bread is a, a good example of breakfast. But you know, if you touch anything like um, cereal or, or anything that is simple carb in the morning, <clears throat> it would not be good food to start your morning with. So this is bad food choice. That kind of choice would lead you to subsequent weight gain because if you start day with something empty, something that will store uh, fat, you don't have much opportunity to lose weight, right? So second, I guess, leading cause for people gaining weight, in my opinion, is choice of hydration. It's, I know, I know, you would say, uh, look, crack, you know, hydration is hydration, so what's the problem? So we've got so many options in our modern world, what we're drinking, that we're drinking everything but what we should drink. And even if people focusing on what we should drink, they do, mostly don't do it right. And i explain later on. But let's say what would be poor choice of hydration. Uh, first one would be drinks with milk. People like tea with milk, people like coffee with milk, people like drink milk with something as a shake. And it does not come usually part of the meal. It, it comes as drink in between meals or drink, you know, just because you bored or a social drink. So what happened with that? Milk would have two things that would irritate system. I assume that you know everyone would uh, choose the milk that's available to them, which would be A1 milk, not A2. So A2 milk, it's more expensive milk. I'm not sure about other countries, but in Australia, um, it's more expensive, and that's the milk that I would recommend if you really want to drink milk. I would 
try to avoid milk uh, drinking milk altogether but if you're drinking milk try a2 but let's say you added uh, your uh, milk to your drink so what happens then milk got two things that will go against you first of all it's uh, lactose in milk which is uh, milk sugar so let's say you ate your meal you spike your insulin insulin start just start coming down and then you had the drink and lactose would spike that insulin again so you can see again we're coming back to the insulin response and every time the insulin is high you're storing fat so you say well it's only drink see the body doesn't see it the same way the body sees your drink with milk as another meal so let's say you're eating three four five six meals and then you got three extra drinks so you're approaching uh, like almost 10 meals a day <clears throat> and it's something that definitely doesn't matter how much you run how much you jump what calorie deficit you produce in your uh, meal plans the milk drink would contribute to fat gain because every time that insulin is high you're storing fat right the second type of the drink that people would think now nah, that's okay but it's not okay it's drinks with sugar or fructose and you never know what's inside because if you did not make the drink you don't know what's inside so most of the drinks modern drinks package drinks will have fructose because fructose is cheaper than sucrose and um, that's why you actually um, do two bad things fructose is 50% fructose 50% glucose so fructose goes to uh, liver uh, and, and, and getting breaking down and uh, and the process uh, to small fatty deposits and will uh, deposit around the liver and then around abdominal area and rest of the organs and sugar would spike insulin and store fat elsewhere so drinks with sugar or fructose like juices or soft drinks um, any soft drinks and any juices um, would create that <clears throat> any juice that you buy in the shop it's not healthy juice don't get fooled by that it's a fructose bomb uh, it's a fiber deprived drink and um, totally oxidized so there's no vitamins no minerals that would be good for you as it comes to your body it creates havoc um, it's just bad choice altogether and uh, what's the most saddest bit we give it to our kids and things like that but it's totally different story i've got separate video on that and i'll publish it soon so uh, drinks with sugar and fructose will definitely contribute to your weight gain and it will be classed as additional meal just remember that another problem is drink with any energy content I can see clear trend with uh, drinks with call vitamin water. Uh, you would say, yeah, it's a water that got fortified vitamins in it. Uh, what's wrong with that? Well, you can clearly taste the sweet taste. So it's either with sweetener or with sugar or fructose, right? Most likely it's sugar or fructose, but let's take allegedly best scenario. It's with sweetener sweeteners that you use in any um, commercial drinks are cheapest they can come up with and they come into your body and will destroy majority of good gut bacteria just remember gut bacteria feeds and other things in the body and does take your energy if you don't have good gut bacteria you're not metabolizing food well your bloodstream picking up all the rubbish from from undigested food and also that bacteria while it's consuming what it's consuming inside it takes your energy your bacteria doesn't take energy if you're not metabolizing food you are gaining weight so you need to watch for two things the uh, sugary uh, or, or, or drinks that contain energy right and another one is uh, drinks with what artificial sweeteners what kind of sweetener is there and make sure if it's not monk fruit if it's not stevia and not erythritol any other sweetener 
would damage your gut bacteria, right? And the last drink that is really bad for many, many things, especially dental work, is energy drink. Energy drinks, um, they literally don't give you energy. Uh, um, I created a lot of videos about coffee and caffeine. Uh, they work on different pathways, but they also destroy the balance between uh, acid and alkaline in the body. It, it basically kills your digestive system uh, as an acid. It kills your um, teeth enamel. Uh, it's, it's a big choice. It's a big choice. So I would say um, choice of hydration is really important. And this is where many people go wrong because they don't consider hydration is potential problem of weight gain. Um, another thing that may go against you in hydration and that's why I need to be careful. That's totally different subject. Is people that exercising a lot, working on hot condition, and just consuming a lot of water because they do, right? Water is a great choice of drink, right? But what it does, if you if you drink a lot of water, it will flush out minerals and especially electrolytes. Electrolytes are really important in all muscle and body functions. So. Um, that's a different subject. It's not directly um, uh, related to weight gain, but if you do flush it, if your muscles not working efficiently, again, you're not expending that energy, and energy that you're not using will be stored for later. Right. So, so far we cover bed food choices and <clears throat> choice of hydration. Be careful what you hydrate. I'm not even touching all those uh, smoothies and. Um, uh, I don't know, fancy coffees that people drink, those are just, you know, totally, I think everyone understands that they're so bad for you. I'm just talking about like hidden dangers that people may not realize. So uh, the point number three in, in, in weight gain that you would like to take, it's too many meals, you know, and this is where I blame mostly culture of many countries that I literally been in and and, and uh, the message was you need to eat between four to six meals so your metabolism not getting wrecked you actually wrecking your metabolism if you're not giving it a rest right and and by eating consistently you're elevating the insulin levels and insulin it's only one message there storing fat insulin like remember insulin the every time it's released it's a storage hormone it does everything to get glucose out of bloodstream and it stores it in the way of fat right so too many meals will be uh will contribute to that and basically I, i've got my notes uh, I'll, I'll publish them uh, at the end of the video in description so people that could not see me live stream or um don't understand my English or would like to read what I, want, I was talking about point by point. I put everything that I mentioned below under the video when I finish a uh, live stream. So too many meals will create consistent insulin in the blood stream and insulin may cause fat storage. Snacking. Snacking is really bad. I can see people, for example, sitting there and say, oh, I take even like snacking like with nuts and seeds and usually people are not snacking with that um, but people usually snack with I don't know sweet stuff or savory stuff does not matter what you snack with the, your body will perceive it as a meal evolutionary we didn't have the choice of food available around us right now we're actually not blessed, we cursed with food so available. So when you feel a little bit hungry, you're taking everything that's around you and you put it in the mouth as a snack. And snack again will rise insulin, insulin will store fat. So um, too many meals will lead to weight gain. And Caloric drinks between meals are equal snack as well. So, for example, you eat your breakfast and then an hour later you had your little snack as a 
um, I don't know, nuts or seeds or anything else, right? And then, you know, you decide, I'll have a cup of tea with milk. So before you even started your lunch, you already got three meals. Three meals. It's um, it's pretty good experience. And you're not giving your metabolism any break. So it, every time that you consume food, it will be stored. And it's not about energy that you expend. When insulin is in the, in the blood system and you... Um, you consume in food, it will signal to um, to store everything unless you vigorously exercise and like you run in a marathon or um, or you, I don't know, in some sort of competition. But majority of us, not in competition, not running marathon. And by the way, stress is not equals marathon or competition. Stress will uh, create more, uh, it, it, will, it will trigger cortisol, it will trigger... Um, insulin response and again stress another contributor to uh, weight gain so too many meals too many snacks and caloric drinks in between meals will signal weight gain and speaking about stress um, let's talk about stress so people don't understand stress stress could be good for you and stress could be bad for you let's talk about stress that is good for you so stress um, in the gym or okay I, I don't wanna I don't wanna actually talk about environment let's talk about stress that is temporary stress meant to be temporary and stress inject a lot of good hormones in the bloodstream right so if you got temporary stress that then you know you stop that's what body wants body doesn't want constant stress and i think from the moment we wake up to the moment that we're going to sleep we incur or endure consistent stress and stress will release main hormone called cortisol and cortisol will spike blood sugar and blood sugar will trigger insulin and insulin again will store fat so stress regardless of what kind of stress is that will be uh, um, signaling weight gain right so cortisol weight gain and <clears throat> also the cortisol as a stress will suppress hormone called melatonin melatonin is a hormone that gives you sleepy feeling and that helps you to go to sleep i would like to emphasize importance of sleep in life so if you would like to lose weight the biggest weight loss occurs during the sleep you cannot lose as much energy in the gym or any daily activity as much as you use in the sleep we're losing the sleep between 600 calories to 1000 calories there's so many processes going through our body and especially brain during the sleep they they are energy hungry sleep is a crucial part of your weight loss journey so if you're not ensuring that you have a good sleep you have very little opportunity to lose weight and again you can clearly see how sleep and stress are coming in a loop because stress creates cortisol and cortisol it's melatonin suppressant so while you are stressed there's no chance that you're going to sleep and sleep well and I'll create a separate video on sleep. There's a four separate pillars of sleep. Um, for example, if you sleep for eight hours, doesn't mean that you have uh, sufficient enough sleep, right? So sleep should have a uh, uh, length, quality, consistency, and um, uh, and 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 basically should be uh, have a REM sleep in it as well. So it's a different quality of sleep, but low levels of melatonin means poor sleep as i say and poor sleep equals stress why poor sleep equals stress because the thing that wakes us up it's reduction of melatonin and introduction introduction of cortisol the cortisol and melatonin mechanism it's what wakes us up so when cortisol becoming more significant than melatonin in the body 
it signals us to wake up. So if you stress, you don't have any opportunity to sleep. And that's the most important part And sleep. It's most energy consuming process in the body. Number five that I would like to talk. It's a little or no muscle deployment. I'm talking about office workers. I'm one of them. And when I'm talking about muscles, sorry, I just have a sip of tea because talking too much. Um, when I'm talking about muscle deployment, it doesn't mean serious workout. If you can do serious workout, that's all good. Muscle deployment, it's actually not sitting. If you can have a stand desk, that's the first step for you to um, make sure that your muscles work. And you may not believe, you're even standing, you're not moving or anything, how many muscles support your body while you stand uh, is crazy. So standing is a good idea. Every 10-15 minutes just moving short loops in the office, it's another good idea. And of course, um, if, if, if you don't deploy muscles, um, body adapts. Our bodies are very smart. They adapt to pretty much every single abuse we throw at the body. So, and body is lazy as well. So, if you don't use it, you lose it. Same with muscle. If you don't, muscle works. Muscle is not organ that you grow. Muscle is a work organ that you tear or break down. And during the sleep, it heals and getting stronger. So, if you're not breaking down muscle in a... In a way of exercise they don't have opportunity to grow and if they don't grow they're getting smaller and then our body is getting larger and we have problem of moving all together and it creates a lot of stress and stress equals inflammation inflammation is the biggest problem of our body because inflammation takes immune system energy and effort from everything else that body is supposed to do <clears throat> so the moment we got inflammation, the, our body neglects other processes and one of them would be using fat for energy, right? So we gain weight every time we got inflammation in the body. So use your muscles, give them some energy, get the blood going so blood will go to muscles and deliver those nutrients. So you need to keep moving to pump blood. You don't have to do any vigorous exercise if you don't, you don't want to, if you're not a sportsman, but simple movement of walking, of moving arms, of, I don't know, just moving around would do, right? So number six, and it's obvious, but I still would like to touch it, eating too much. Um, eating too much is an interesting one because people don't think eating too much. It's not only binge eating. You know how modern society, because we're so poor in knowledge and they would like, you know, put labels on everything. We see food and we say, well, that's super food, right? And if you go hard at it, it's better for you. The answer is no. By no means, you don't need to overdo any good thing. I didn't do any, overdo any bad thing. But good, a lot of good thing is not a good thing. So eating too much of any food would signal storage. So body takes what it needs right now and then store for later. It's, I'm talking about not only carbohydrates that will be stored anyway. If you uh, eat a lot of uh, protein or fat food and you exceeding what your body needs, and it's not again calories in, calories out. It's more like macronutrients in and macronutrients stay. So it's not about calories again. Calories I will touch later. It's not true definition. And I'll explain it again soon. So eating too much of any food would signal storage. So all those buffet and, and all those binge eating, you know what it does to you. And then eating too much or eating just enough of empty food. So why it is in too, eating too much category? Because it doesn't matter how much of empty food you eat, your body will ask for more. Body doesn't like empty food. It's almost like um, your car is running out of petrol. You come into petrol station, you put nozzle on the car, 
didn't put any petrol and driving away. That's almost the same situation as you would um, uh, eat empty food. Your body experiences some sort of taste uh, and pleasure and everything signals that, hey, in a couple of minutes you receive some nutrients. And body expects nutrients and it's not getting it. So guess what? When all that good feel dopamine hormones will subside, your body say, all right, um, I think we had food, but I cannot experience any food. I need more. So this is where you may experience constant hunger. Constant hunger is signal that your um, you got metabolic syndrome, which basically could be insulin sensitivity, which is you know leading to type two diabetes. But also that means that you're not giving your body anything that body would accept as um, potentially good food, right? So empty food is no, no, it's really big one, um, fat gain. And eating too much before sleep. Uh, what is the problem with that is, um, so sleep is designed to be a restorative process and not active digestion or any kind of activity. So um, if we're eating before sleep, our sleep will be interrupted because the digestion will take priority, right? It's first of all. So I already touched uh, about sleep. If we're not sleeping, we'll gain weight, right? And second one is um, processes that should go in restoring body for, to, to, uh, for freshness next day would not happen until minimum food digested because undigested food may, go, may get spoiled. And body would do everything not to do that, right? So I would suggest eating between three to four hours, ideally four and more hours before going to sleep. And <clears throat> that will ensure that um, storage occurs less. And when we're talking about storage, it's a fat storage in the body. So if I would divide meals, my breakfast would be Actually, if I would divide meals, uh, ideally you would eat two meals a day with no snacking. Two meals a day. If you insist on three meals a day, your breakfast should be biggest, your lunch should be medium, and your dinner should be the lightest, and dinner should come three to four hours before going to sleep. That will ensure that you, if you eat right food, and it's not, it's not that eat that and don't eat that. Right food, that means you're getting nutrients and energy. So if you eat right food at right times, it's a great contributor for not gaining weight, right? So number seven, not tracking your health. And I'm not talking about fitness trackers. They are good, they have purpose, but they're not accurate. Um, they're mostly differentiating your one day to your other day. Um, and I don't believe in naming and shaming. But tracking your health is understanding what do you do and what you don't do. The first thing that I would track is sleep and quality of sleep. Again, we're talking about weight loss. Sleep is important for many, many things in the body. But because we're talking about weight loss, Sleep is the process that most energy hungry, that help you most lose your weight. So tracking sleep is important. See whether your shell falls. If you struggling to fall asleep, maybe you need to start meditation or relaxing before going to sleep. Uh, inability to fall asleep most likely it's as a result of too much cortisol in the body. Cortisol suppresses melatonin. If you sleep and then you wake up in the middle of the sleep, right? Uh, again, could be stress or could be not enough activity during the day. Because if your body uh, has very little to recover or nothing to recover, sleep will be chopped. If your activities during the day are significant, body have a lot of restorative processes that will run during the night and that will ensure longer sleep. So tracking sleep, you actually can get hints what, what you're not doing so well during the day. And it's quite important. Um, 
Next one is stress levels. Stress is good for you, but when it's in a short burst period, right? We need to make sure that our stress is limited and it's burst, right? So, for example, exercising, great. Exercising long time, not good. So, for example, if you go today and run marathon and you're not marathon runner, you most likely will create more damage than good. So, not every sport, not every exercise is a good exercise. So, stress levels need to be short, need to be burst, and need to be efficient. So, if you're going to exercise, do burst of exercises. If you're going into um, some sort of unpleasant meeting or, or, or thing that will create stress, make sure that it's productive and it's intense, right? So, you go in there unstress, you stress in a meeting and come out of it and get conclusion. So, you're not kind of constantly stressed about it, right? And at night time, I would suggest that the biggest thing that I discover, not watching news, not listening to gossip, not reading gossip, nothing that will make your mind <clears throat> be uh, consciously or subconsciously stressed is good for good sleep, right? So avoid long period of stress. That is crucial. Then, you know, tracking nutrition. And, you know, that's the point when people say check your calories please do not track your calories and I think I gave example in my previous video if you eat a donut could be 100 calories or you eat avocado which most likely close to 400 calories you cannot say that I had 100 calories so uh, you know I'm entitled for another 300 or if I ate avocado I'm not entitled to anything else the way it metabolizes in the body, the way it actually affects everything in our body, it's called nutrition. And if you eat right nutrition, I can almost assure you, you will never limit yourself in amount of food that you eat. If anything, you may struggle to consume the uh, right amount. You, some people that I'm helping uh, with losing weight, they start losing weight and they cannot stop. And I say, hey, what do I do to... Uh, to gain weight, it's a totally different subject how to gain weight and I'm not sure whether people need to gain weight but for losing weight, if you eat right nutritious food and it's not about particular food, eat this, don't eat that just don't eat what's not nutritious you will see weight will drop because your body utilizes majority of consumed food for energy, for immune system, for restoring gut bacteria, for brain function, for all things that require energy. And if food is right, it won't store anything or not much for later. And if you reduce your uh, amount of meals a day, in between meals, whatever stored will be taken out of storage and some more. That's the really good way to start losing weight, not limiting yourself in calories, but focusing on nutrition. And again, activity. Um, activity is, um, you need to track it. You need to track it and activity, it's not going to gym. You cannot outrun poor diet. Activity is an, an integral part of what you do. So for example, if you went to the gym, but then you sit in the entire day in the office, there's nothing good about that. You need to monitor your activity. You need to keep moving. And activity doesn't mean running, doesn't mean jumping. Activity means to keep blood pumping, right? And another one is, especially now when we're coming uh, out of the lockdowns with the virus, is mental health. Mental health usually corresponds in um, blocking hormones that... Um, makes us feel good and uh, manifest itself in hormones that are uh, really bad for us like cortisol and as I mentioned before a couple of times cortisol equals weight gain so if you believe that your mental health is not in check and you don't have to tell anyone you may start talking to your doctor you may start talking to people that you trust please get help and mental health is not something that you healthy or not healthy 
there are things in between. If you feel you're getting a little bit unwell in that regard, come and talk to people that you trust. Uh, surround yourself by community of supporters. Talk to professional. It is important to be uh, in a good mental stability. Uh, at, and, and I believe it's even more important than, I wouldn't put an important sense, but you know, it's on a par with all those things that we do to be healthy and happy. Mental health is a big one. All right. So again, good sleep, uh, stress less, nutrition, activity, and mental health. That's the big one for tracking health. And another big one is this is where I created series that um, please I put link down below um, my my series of videos called Trust Me I'm Not a Doctor. Um, there's a lot of things around us that call are called misinformation. Some things are cultural, some things are political, some things are just you know what I call bro science. My mate told the mate, and I believe that I'm knowledgeable, and it's a point of view, and it's becoming you know, a point of truth. So let's you know think before we do something. So for example, as part of my journey, and look, I'm not, I'm not an angel. I've been through so much that I'm not proud of, and this is why I'm trying to share my knowledge with everyone else. I went through the um, uh, shakes. I went through the. Uh, juices. I went through the uh, low fat diet. I went through the uh, starvation. I went through so many things until I start actually reading scientific literature. So one of the things that I like to talk it's low fat, fat free, low sugar things, right? Let me make clear one particular things, and it's important to remember. Eating fat does not make you fat. There's no mechanism in the body that when you ingest fat, it stores as a fat. Fat oxidizes. It's not happening. And low fat creates a lot of troubles, especially in mental capacity. Our nerve system, our, our, our you know, most crucial parts are functioning on saturated fat. You do need eat healthy fats, right? If you embark on a low fat diet, you create so many metabolic diseases, it's not funny. And by the way, products that are low in fat, they need to get the taste somewhere, and they're usually getting it from sugars. So, low fat is really bad for you. Now, low sugar or sugar free. It's another gimmick that's really widely used and I'm not happy with that. Sugar-free could be full of fructose. Fructose is not sugar, but it is a poison. Another one, sugar-free, is when they put uh, sweeteners. There are a number of sweeteners around us. There are a lot of sweeteners that are destroying gut bacteria. If you look at the label and your sweetener is not monk fruit, Erythritol, sorry, uh, erythritol or stevia, any other sweetener would destroy your good, bad, good gut bacteria, and it's the beginning of trouble. So misinformation on low fat, fat free, low sugar, sugar free. Stay away from those statements. The food that has that label, I would guarantee you, 99% is not good for you. Full stop. Another misinformation when people say this is good for you. There are so many people come to me and they, you know, show me something, say, isn't it good for you? And I'm looking, yeah, sure. You should not isolate any food from the rest of the food pyramid, right? Just remember, if you're good at something, you may be not good at something else. It doesn't make you good at everything. Same with food. Every food is important because it has nutrition, has minerals, it has vitamins. Some food give you one set of vitamins and minerals and depleting you from another. Good example would be, um, I don't know, just first example will jump in my head is uh, almond nuts. They are extremely nutritious 
part, but because we're eating unactivated almond nuts, the shell, the, the brown shell on almond nuts, will chelate other minerals in the body. So if you eat almonds for health and you're neglecting other parts, the almonds will chelate other minerals from your body and actually deplete you from other minerals. So do not take one page from beautiful book and say this is the best page of the book. The book is wonderful. So do not buy statements, this is good for you. Balanced diet and nutritious diet is good for you. There's no one thing that is good for you. All right. Another one, and I think I already created a video on that subject, superfood. Yes, there are so many foods that are dense in particular vitamins and minerals. It doesn't mean they cover everything that you need. And I would not focus on superfood. They should be part of your diet, but they should not be instead of something. So do not go into a superfood store and say, well, this is good for kidney, this is good for liver, and I'll eat this and that. If your diet is not balanced, none of that will be any good for you and you are likely to overeat. So be careful of superfood. Superfood is not your statement that you need to capitalize on. Another one is, um, I can see like at least for the last 10 years in Australia, there's a big message. You need to eat five vegetables and two fruit daily. And I consider it, while it's amazing message, it's such misinformation. So why? Because that message is probably designed for those people that are eating burgers and pizzas and nothing else. Yes, if you stop doing that and you eat your five vegetables and two fruits, you definitely see 100% improvement. But if your diet is balanced and you suddenly start getting that message of five vegetables and two fruits, it actually may take you from good to worse. Why? Uh, let's think where our vegetables and fruit getting uh, vitamins and minerals from. From soil. Did you ever think where you're getting your vegetables from? There's a little chance that your vegetables grow in hydroponically. That means it's not even touching soil. You're getting those beautiful shaped fruit and vegetable, right? That is like perfectly pictured kind of type. That means that either genetically modified or been grown in a sterile, sterile environment with no uh, uh, any nutrients and you get in and so you may get some taste. You may count them as you eating some vegetables and fruit. But from nutrition perspective, you're not getting much at all. So again, I would not go like a full statement. I have to have five vegetables and, and, and two fruit a day. Focus on on origins and where it comes from, on variety. Our gut bacteria likes variety. If you focus on the same five vegetables every day, at some stage your gut bacteria will start dying off. It will adapt and won't survive quite well on, on that. So I think it's misinformation. While it's really good for people that live in really poor uh, lifestyle and consume a very poor diet, for average people that probably listen to my channel, I think it's a great idea to go beyond five vegetables and two fruit, right? Another bad one, really bad one, food pyramid. Especially when I see uh, fatty food placed in the bottom of pyramid and say do not consume that. It's really better. If you see top of the pyramid, it's all your carbohydrates, all the things that make you store fat. I'm not sure. Look, I, I know what it is. I know how historically it happened that we had food pyramid. I don't want to go into that debate. It was actually done by policy makers and very little consultation with the nutritionist. And those nutritionists they were consulted with, they were part of the crew that were making policy. So please do not focus on the food pyramid. It's incorrect, right? Um, if you'd like me to create a separate video on nutrition, I will. But try to limit your carbohydrate consumption. And if you, if you consume carbohydrates, make sure that they have a lot of soluble or insoluble fiber. 
because fiber is not part of carbohydrate count, right? So for example, if you got 20 gram of carbs in uh, an item and it's 10 grams of fiber, you only got 10 grams of carbs. You need to remember that. So food pyramid, please completely ignore it. Don't even go to that uh, uh, level of understanding of nutrition. Another misinformation is um, junk food with plenty of vitamins. And people picking up cereal, uh, cereal is like the first example that jump in my head. Uh, and there's uh, so many vitamins and minerals and everything else that is and, and then people say, oh, isn't like, you know, all the vitamins I need? But look, you cannot consume all your vitamins from cereal. They're fortified, they're synthetic, they're not absorbed by body quite well. And they are very, very nutrition poor. So if you eat, uh, eat bad nutrition, you basically secrete more of the, excrete all the uh, vitamins that are already there, or they will, you know, conflict with one another. And it's not a good way to consume your vitamins. So fortified vitamins are not good. There's a lot of food, junk food that's been fortified with vitamins, just remember your body will first try to get rid of the toxin. So if you eat something that's not nutritious, it's toxic, your body will focus on that. As part of that, will excrete all the vitamins. So um, eat you know, normal food. Don't eat any junk food with fortified vitamins in it. And another one is um, misinformation, a balanced diet. What is the balanced diet? It's not that you're depriving yourself from food and then you can binge and uh, I did this, like for example, a hard exercise, so I deserve some sort of uh, snack or, uh, or treat. Balance means balanced nutrition. It's not balanced between being uh, having poor diet and okay diet. Balanced diet totally misrepresented and you know sold in the wrong way. So, as you can see, I listed a couple of misinformation. I don't want to do loops about that, but misinformation is quite significant and you need to understand where information is not correct and help yourself with avoiding that incorrect information. Another big one, but that's, you know, that's a genuine, I think, problem is uh, food availability. In Australia, we're lucky. Uh, we've got mild winters, we've got summer most of the time. We've got literally good food available all the time. Other countries um, may not have all the food available or when it's available, it's already oxidized and things like that. So um, I would say if you really look in, into self-improvement and you're looking into doing something to help your weight, to help your um, diet, think of human nature. We either create excuse or we create a plan. So if you sit around and good things not coming to you, that means you're not putting effort, right? And I'm sorry, I'm not saying you don't, but you know, um, some degree of uh, good outcomes require change. A change requires to do something different, something that outside what you've done so far. Obviously, if you if you if you're looking at my channel, you would like to change something in your life. So change would come as a discipline. So think every time that you cannot find some sort of food or nutrition that you need, is it excuse or is it you know for real? And another one is a big one. Uh, people say, well, it's nutritious, but it's not tasty. There's a lot of spices that you can add to nutritious food to make it more tasty. And there's a big difference between spice and MSG. MSG is artificial taste that tricks your mind to think it's tasty. So a good example would be taking um, one minute noodles that if you would not add any of that powder stuff that come with it, if you try those noodles, you'll be quite shocked. They don't have any taste, any. They don't have any nutrition, everyone knows that, but they don't have any taste. So that thing in a packet makes them extra nutritious and that is not true. That's the triggering receptors and, 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 and areas in your brain that reacts and getting fooled by, by what you call MSG. So MSG become illegal in many countries. 
and food companies created another term for MSG, which is MSG, but it's not. So it's so close to MSG, it's not funny. I don't want to go to food uh, uh, processing and biology, but the new term for MSG is called yeast extract. So if you read label and you see yeast extract, and it's actually everywhere, even buy sausages for barbecue, one of them will be maltodextrin and, and yeast extract. Those two things are main taste in your sausages. It's crazy. So if you see yeast extract, think that yeast extract is MSG. So taste is not usually equals nutrition, but you can make nutritious food tasty. Spices are most nutritiously dense food. So add spices away to anything that you eat that is nutritious. Make your food that you reckon is not tasty, tasty with real spices, right? And the last one I guess I would like to touch and it's most significant one is diet, right? Diet, it's a leading cause of weight gain. Please don't laugh, it's a serious matter. I never saw anyone who did diet and did not put all the kilos back on. It's just a matter of time. Why is that? Because applying diet is a temporary restriction of something. First of all, you're damaging your metabolism. Secondly, you're most likely depriving yourself from vitamins and minerals. Third, it's unpleasant. And fourth, it always results in coming back and piling a little bit more on top of it because it's not a lifestyle. Diet tends to be a temporary. So I'm talking about vegetarian people, carnivore, keto, paleo, Atkins. There's so many diet. If it's not your lifestyle, if it's temporary diet, please don't do this. So for example, I'm eating either low carb or ketogenic diet, right? But it's not ketogenic diet, it's ketogenic lifestyle. I'm making sure that my primary energy uh, uh, or fuel source in my body are ketones and not glucose. But I'm not doing diet. I'm doing it for a number of years. That's what I eat. That's what I like. I do like, you know, roasts. I do like avocados. I do like nuts. I do like all the things that are not carbohydrate. But it's not a diet diet it's something that you force yourself to do i love what i do so if you're vegetarian because of your beliefs all right that's your choice but if you're vegetarian because you believe the plants will make you thin please stop because there's so much nutrients that you cannot find in the plants that are in the meat or other things right if you're carnivore please 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 have a look what you're missing. There's a lot of meats. Actually, there's no meats that contain even vitamin C. Vitamin C is a main antioxidant in the body. So see how balanced diet is important. If you're on keto, right, you may excrete the minerals like no tomorrow. Take care of your minerals. If you're in pellet, there's a different subset of problems. If you're in Atkins, you know, you're probably more uh, rounded, but still do not go into diet diet are a major cause of weight gain right so uh, by the way um, i'm talking a lot but you know if you like my channel if you're new to my channel please uh subscribe like this video uh click notification bell and let me know if you would like to hear anything else uh, look my transformation was quite phenomenal but it's not finished i'm constantly working on improvements and my biggest challenge right now, I would like to share my knowledge. I would like to make sure that people can help themselves. If you listen to me or to anyone else and you would like to share your story, please comment down below. Comment what you would like to hear. Comment how can I help you with what you hear or see. I'm here to help you. I think I'm getting where I'm going to. But, you know, without helping people, it's my, my mission is not complete. Because you cannot sit there and not share positive good thing, right? So again, coming back to all the diet and how to lose weight, let's talk about where do you start. We, we all discuss what makes you gain weight, right? Let's discuss where you start, what, what to do. 
first what you need to do is define your goal right it should be clear definition it shouldn't be fluffy definition oh I would like to lose some weight well that's great you know many people won't but you know what is your goal do you want to lose you know one kilogram five kilograms do you want to lose five kilograms in a year what is your goal make sure that your goal is small the first one is small so for example I would like to lose one kilo in a month you know what it's very achievable but what it will give you it won't slow down the process it will speed it up it will give you confidence it will give you frame of mind that you're capable of doing things it will give you opportunity to learn more and see what lead you to the point of success right so if you start with ambitious goal, for example, like take me, for example, I would sit there um, 10 years ago and say, Greg, in 10 years time, I would like you to be 30 kilos lighter. Do you think I would be 30 kilos lighter? I can guarantee you, no, it's a very ambitious goal. It's a scary goal. Don't scare yourself from the wonderful outcomes. Start small. And if you didn't watch my video about discipline, Many people didn't like it because I think the message was quite uh, cryptic. So the idea is starting small. I know it's not weight related, but you know, you wake up in the morning, make up your bed. You know, if you never did it before, it will teach you discipline of following something that you committed to. And then, you know, lose a couple of grams, lose a couple of hundred grams, and then lose kilograms, and then understand your diet, understand your lifestyle. You know teach others it's great so discipline is a big one big one another one what I would like you to do is celebrate success not with the cake not with going out and drinking with friends that's what would deter you from further goals celebrate success as self-achievement it's in your mental capacity to be happy for yourself you don't need your external influences to make you happy achieve your own goal, celebrate success, capitalize on success, move on. What can you do? Another one, it's exactly what I'm doing right now. Share your success with others. Not in a point of kind of, you know, um, bragging about, oh, look, guys, I, I, I lost 30 kilos. No. See, I had a very hard journey. I did that and I failed and that I failed and suddenly I start understanding what's going on and that how body works that's what needs to be done and I suggest you try this and that try that so lead people don't tell them how it's done because it's not it's not really good point on what they might experience also remember change is a hard thing if something was easy for you it doesn't mean it would be easy for someone else so please help yourself and help others right and the biggest one and that's what most of the people that i'm leading trying to do don't think about quick fix any commercial options shakes pills even personal trainers dietitians they design it's their profession to make money and the more money they make out of you, the more successful they are. I'm not saying they're not helping people, but you cannot be helped if you don't understand what you do. And this is what my channel is for, to give you a range of knowledge so you can pick and choose where you start. If you're going to the gym and I see it every day, personal trainer will smash you, will make you hurt. Do you reckon hurting in the gym will help you lose weight? No. If you go to the dietitian, and I'm not talking about there are some really good ones, but majority of the people that I pick up uh, and of uh, failing after the dietitian visit, there will be something like, you know, eat this, don't eat that. They're not even explaining how body works. And most of them actually have no idea. The reason is that because they started from a book that was written 20, 30, 40 years ago when science of today was not there, right? And definitely there's no pills that you can take to lose the uh, weight. And by the way, losing weight, it could be a bad thing. Think of extreme weight loss as uh, bulimia. You actually losing weight um, can deprive yourself from minerals, from vitamins and from muscle mass. 
from bond density. You don't want that. This is why doing things as a complex approach is so important, right? So, um, let's talk about what I achieve in my transformation. Because uh, today we talk about losing weight and it's great. So think about your transformation as what you're going to do. Because losing weight, it's probably one little part of what you do. So it's not your total goal. I believe if you're losing weight, it's not because you would like, you know, some magic number, because you would like to feel great, because you would like to be healthier, because you would like to be happier. So my transformation was about achieving goals, about feeling great, about not getting sick. And I'm talking about uh, cold and flu. I'm talking about metabolic diseases. People, for example, allergic to things or intolerant. People that um, uh, got headache or, or you know, brain fog or things like that. That's the result of metabolic disease. That means the body is inflamed. That means that people are getting sick. That was part of my transformation. Another one is a self-improvement. It's what I'm doing right now. You know, I record video for you and I listen to it and I learn. I'm not a great speaker. I'm not a motivational speaker. But I'm getting myself out of comfort zone and learning new skill by helping others, right? And helping others, help others to achieve their dreams. There's another very positive loop that can come back to you in the form of very powerful endorphins. Endorphins are opposite from dopamine. That's a hormone that makes you feel good for a long time and keeps you in that good feeling for a long time. Gives you energy, gives you mental capacity, gives you everything. Right? And you know what? The last one is transformation is about improving and constantly improving acknowledging that you don't know everything and moving along and learning new things and shaping your lifestyle. You know, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm 44 years old. I believe I'm fit, but I'm still learning. I'm learning from others. I've got my people that I follow. I've got people that I learn from. I've got literature, literature that I'm, 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 I'm reading. If I've got time, I'm always learning new things. Also, what I would like to emphasize, what my transformation was not about. It's not about weight loss recipe. I don't have recipe for you. The reason is that everyone come in different way to gain weight. I don't know how you gain your weight. It could be stressful situation, could be bad food, could be shift work, could be, you know, many things. Um, I'm not here to give you recipe. I'm here to share with you how body works. So you try a couple of different things that you may listen to me and say, yes, Greg, I think that's what I do. That's what, you know, uh, may you know, result in my personal weight gain. So I'm not giving you a recipe. I'm giving you information. Also, what my transformation and what your transformation should be, it shouldn't be a temporary thing. I beg you not to go into diets. I beg you to start changing lifestyle because when you change in lifestyle, you're changing things for better. When you create a diet, you're depriving yourself, and deprivation is never a good thing, right? Um, also, be careful of wishing something that you cannot have, right? So sometimes we wish something we don't have, and we compensate it with something else. So. Um, be careful about that. I don't want to go too much into it, but um, uh, that's another thing that may uh, deviate you from your, from your goal. Also, I would like to make sure that you understand that this channel and many other helpful channels and health in general, they are not made for profit. People and, and organizations that are trying to profit on your health, they're not caring about your health. Try to listen mostly of for those people, they don't have any um, strong opinions, they have knowledge. Try listen to people and organizations that don't have commercial interest. They trying to lead you and so on. So health is not made for profit, right? Health is not template of success. So my transformation is not template for your success. 
So, you know, create your own transformation, share your story. And uh, do not try to copycat uh, of something like, for example, many people uh, following celebrities and trying to, oh, she that did that and, you know, that was the result. Remember, celebrities, that's actually quite interesting. I may create a separate video on that. I try to um, understand how celebrities, besides their influence, um, how they achieve what they achieve. They have a number of professionals. They get paid money to achieve outcome that celebrities making money from that outcome and a portion is spent on being looked after so small so they make a lot of money on what they achieve and sell to you so do not copy others because what you see is not what you get all right i think we i a little bit overstayed my welcome here uh, i applied the um, um, live cast will be around an hour an hour 10 minutes so thank you so much for listening if you like what i've spoken about today if you'd like to hear more stories if you'd like to hear something that i, I you believe i can help you with please let me know in the comments down below uh, thank you so much for watching until next live cast